What is our obligation to a homeless person? You're walking down the street of Manhattan, and you see someone lying there, and uh, they, they have a little cup or whatever it is. You may even know that they may use the money for alcohol or drugs or nothing that is product constructive. What's our, what's our obligation? Should we help them? Should we not help them? You know? Many of us, our hearts go out, and we throw them a coin. Um, if you're really so compassionate, why are you just throwing them a coin? Why don't you invite them to dinner? Oh, no, no, no. It may be dangerous. I don't need someone that's dirty in my house. In other words, your empathy is uh, is limited to your comfort zone, basically. And what happens if day walks by and you're in a very bad mood or a nervous mood and you suddenly see this guy, this homeless person, and they make you nervous and say, what are they doing here? Let them clean up the streets. So suddenly one day you're not in the mood of it, so you don't throw them a coin. So who exactly determines empathy? Just because you feel bad? Is, is our feeling bad the the the... the 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 word the barometer the litmus test of determining what is you know what is true empathy or not but if you really want to look at your own um, your own so called psyche understand yourself it's important to know why and the motivation if one really wants to work on empathy you know we all understand that the physical uh, human body the physical body has different uh, elements to it you know we have muscles we have nerves we have uh, blood vessels we have a whole body, we have a skeleton and we have different vitamins minerals that nourish different components of the body, when you eat healthy foods you uh, nourish that part if God forbid there is a lack of something a deficiency, so we try to supplement it with something to keep it going the same exact same truth is with the soul the soul is also made up of components this most people are not aware of and it's an intricate structure. So just like there's a physical DNA, there's a spiritual DNA, a spiritual genome. 49 components, actual components of a soul. Now they're not tangible like a muscle and a nerve and a blood vessel, but they're absolutely real. So when we, for example, are kind to somebody, chesed, love, we're loving. So most of us think of it as, okay, you know, the right thing to do is to be kind to people. We essentially see it as like almost an obligation, or even a, even something we find very pleasant. If you were blessed with something, you should share. Why not be kind? Why not help another? But we don't think about it the other way around. If chesed and love and kindness is an actual component in your soul, when you give, you're actually exercising that muscle called love. So you may be getting more in return than the person who's receiving. And it actually says that in the Medrash. More than the giver is giving to the recipient, the recipient is giving to the giver. Yes, financially, if it's money or food or other gift, obviously the one that's receiving is receiving the tangible. But who knows how much is nourishing that component in you called chesed. And when you don't love and, and you're not kind, it's, think of it like this. Think of a muscle that can go into atrophy that's not being used. Think of your arm just sitting there without use. 